Guys, welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Today we have a couple of 60 horsepower tractors. This one's a four series, this one's a five series. Same horsepower, but different machines. Will they do the same thing? As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. We have a set of spacers on the 4720 here. If you're looking for a high quality, made in America solution to help that stability issue that you have with your tractor, Boro comes with a lifetime warranty. You can't go wrong. As always, I would appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. If you have something to add to the conversation, leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Okay, so let's talk about numbers first. And by numbers, I mean pricing, dimensions, weight, lift capacities, anything that's really involving a number. Okay, so there's gonna be a wide spectrum of price points, but we'll take these two particular used tractors as an example. So this guy here is a 2018 John Deere 5065E. So about 65 horsepower. It does have a factory cab on there. Um, which compared to the 4720 also has a factory cab. So we're somewhat apples to apples. Front end loader on here as well. Nothing else comes along with it, but set up this way is $45,000. This tractor has about 260 hours on it. So this unit here is a 2012 John Deere 4720, 66 horsepower, so 65 versus 66, essentially the same thing. Again, this unit is equipped with a factory cab, and a factory cab, in my opinion, we've talked about it before, means you're gonna have air conditioning and heat. There are a couple of smaller John Deeres that come with a Mauser cab, which are a quote-unquote factory installed cab, but they only have heat. That's an important distinction, and all these larger tractors that have a factory cab will include air conditioning as well as heat. So this tractor has a little bit over over 800 hours. Again, it's a 2012, so it's older, it's smaller, more hours, still has a loader on it, also came with a belly mower too. And it's, when I come time to sell, gonna be somewhere around the same price, about $45,000. So we're talking the same price point, $45,000, but different machines, right? Different frame sizes, mower deck, no mower deck, they both have loaders, they both have cabs, big difference in hours. So two different machines, the same price, hmm. There must be more to the story. An important dimension to consider between both of these machines is gonna be the overall width. So outside to outside of your rear tires, which is gonna be the widest point. Now you're actually gonna have a lot of variability that comes into play. On your five series tractors, they're gonna have something called an eight position hub on there. So you can make eight different widths of your rear tires, depending on if you have to do row cropping or if you want more stability or your attachment size. So a common setup is gonna be hovering right around the six foot wide mark, but you'll oftentimes see them go into the six and a half or even seven foot wide mark. And occasionally you're gonna see them a little bit narrower, but that's gonna be for more specific applications. As far as the four series goes, if you're shopping online, pay attention to the rear wheels. If you can get some good pictures of those, the newer four series like the 4066, the 4044, and whatnot are typically not going to have eight position hubs. They're going to be a welded on plate. But the older 4720, like what I have here, does have that eight position wheel so you can have a lot more flexibility. We were set up stock about six foot on the four series as well. So the same thing as the five series. However, we have since added some wheel spacers and flipped the wheels around. So we're at about seven foot right now. Now height will be an important consideration if you need to fit your tractor indoors, you know, in a barn, in a shed. Got to fit it underneath a hard limit there in a garage door. I have personally fit this tractor, my 4720, as well as a couple of my 4066s that I've had, along with some other 4 Series cab tractors, underneath the nominal 8-foot doors that we have at our shop. Unfortunately, the 5 Series is a few inches taller, so you are going to need the next step up, a 9-foot nominal door, in order to fit this. One thing that's a bit deceiving, and I normally rely on tractor data online, uh, tractordata.com is a really good resource to get dimensional information, but the heights that they have listed on there for both of these tractors really don't line up with what reality is. A little bit will depend on your tread pattern of tire. Certain tires are gonna sit taller. The ag tires are gonna be the tallest sitting tire that you can get, so it's gonna increase your overall height. If you happen to have turf tires on one of these four series tractors, which you will see on occasion, that is gonna lower the overall height. And you'll also see a couple of different wheel sizes that are available. These are actually a little bit bigger wheel size than what the standard one is, and it didn't fit until I loaded these tires and took a little bit of air pressure out, and that was just enough. It's that close. It was hitting the weather strip and going in and out of the shop. 
The base tractor weight, not talking about the loaders or loaded tires or wheel weights or anything else, you're gonna be about 5,500 pounds on the five series compared to about 4,500 pounds on the four series. That's with the cabs on there. And those are ballpark numbers, basically just to highlight the fact that you are gonna have a lot more weight on the five series compared to the four. Now pay attention to this because it is often a question that I'm asked I need to lift a ton. You know, I have a 2,000 pound pallet of whatever it is that I need to lift up. What size tractor do I need? Well, I'll tell you, both of these tractors will lift that ton off of the ground. I wouldn't use anything smaller than a four series in order to lift that 2,000 pound load off of the ground. However, if you need to lift it all the way up, you may need to go to a five series because it just depends how high you have to lift that. There's a lot of different loader configurations that are available on both of these, but trying to do an apples to apples comparison with the better of the loaders that come on the four series tractor without the self leveling option, you'll lift up about 2,500 pounds to full height. That measurement is taken at the base of the loader arm. So right down here where they connect to your bucket. So the further out you go this way, the less weight you're gonna lift up. And the higher you go, the less weight you're gonna lift up. So be aware of that when you are trying to size the right piece of equipment. And that isn't specific to the four series, that's just how loaders operate in general. And this loader is rated to lift that 2,500 pound load, if it's positioned way back here, all the way up to nine foot high. On the five series, a very common loader is this 520M. You're gonna lift about 3,100 pounds, again, at the base of the loader arms to about 10 foot high. So you're lifting, what is that, about 20% more weight and you're lifting it a foot higher. Another important consideration is the three-point lift capacity. So on the John Deere 4 Series, if you take the connection point at the end of your three-point arms, go two foot out from there, so if your load center is way out here somewhere, you can lift up 2,500 pounds. So taking a look at the John Deere 5 Series, on your three-point hitch, using that same information. So here's the end of your three-point arms, go 24 inches out. So if your load center, your weight is positioned way out here, you're gonna lift up about 3,200 pounds. For many of you, the type of transmission could be a big deal. On the John Deere 4 Series, you're gonna have a couple of different options. You're gonna have a power reverser, which is gonna have a handle here on the side of the steering column to change forward and reverse, along with the ability to change gears individually. You have to push in a clutch. The other more common option that you're gonna see is gonna be a hydrostatic transmission. If you are shopping new, the hydro will cost a little bit more than the power reverser. Each style of transmission will have pros and cons. So of course, the hydro costs a little bit more than the power reverser. Hydro is going to be more efficient to use, especially in loader operations when you simply push a pedal to go forward and reverse instead of having to change gears or shift a handle. On the flip side, besides being cheaper, the power reverser can also be really great. It's kind of like built-in cruise control if you do a lot of field work, say mowing or tilling, and it can also run cooler. It's not going to be as noisy as a hydro machine, so you kind of got to go back and forth and make that decision. On the John Deere 5E series of tractors, you're going to have a couple of options, different variants of a gear drive transmission. The basic one is going to be called a sink shuttle, which is going to be the most similar to a traditional gear drive tractor like an old school one. The upgraded option is going to be that power reverser that we mentioned over on the 4 Series where you have the ability to go forward and backwards with this little orange handle here. You can quickly change direction without having to clutch. So the difference in how you go in reverse on that sink shuttle or the more basic system is you have your 1, 2, 3, 4 gears over here but you also have your reverse gear as well so you would clutch in. You do have to come to a stop on that transmission as well and put it in reverse and then you get going. Now, I personally do prefer a hydrostatic machine, but there are times when a gear drive is a lot more convenient, but I do a lot more back and forth with my loader than I do field work. So you have to prioritize your usage. Just the other day, I hopped in this five series to get a little bit more practice digging into a pile of, of gravel. We're putting in a road out here and just wanted to get some time in there going back and forth, trying to scoop and level and, and everything else. I didn't last long. I went right back to a four series, a hydro machine, because it's just that much more efficient, but I'm also that much more familiar with it. However, when I was out here mowing this field or tilling, you know, you find yourself going into cruise control a lot. Whereas if you can just put it in a gear and get going, like when we mowed with the M7060, the big Kubota that we had, boy, that sure is a breeze. Let's talk a little bit about variants and differences that you can get within the 4 Series and the 5 Series. Now John Deere doesn't really do the best job in 
making it easy to understand their numbering system. <laughs> and sometimes I still find myself struggling with that. So I wanna to try to break it down a little bit more for you. So starting with the John Deere 4 Series, you are gonna have a 4M and a 4R if you're looking at their current production. Now this model in particular that we have is a 4720, which is a previous generation of the 4R. The 4M Series is, think of it as, kind of like a plain Jane series, not a lot of bells and whistles. They strip out some features to keep the cost down for you. The 4R series is where you're gonna find more of your bells and whistles. You can get a cab option on the 4R that's not available on the 4M series. And you can really start to deck out and option up your tractor if you want to. Moving on to the 5 series from John Deere, they're gonna have three different trim levels, I guess, within the 5 series, the 5E, the 5M, and the 5R. I've never personally seen a 5R tractor besides in pictures online. The 5E is the most popular, the most prevalent that's out there. It's gonna be the cheapest. And it is the most basic, although it does come outfitted pretty well. Even the 5E tractors can come with the cabs like what you see here. You can move up to a 5M or a 5R, which are just gonna increase uh, the loader size, the machine weight, the dimensions are gonna get larger even though they're still a 5 Series. Uh, the bells and whistles are gonna start to increase as well, but so is the price tag. There is going to be a wide range of horsepower within both of these series of tractors. The 4 Series will come from anywhere down to 44 horsepower, I believe, all the way up to 60. 66. The 5 Series is going to start at about 45 horsepower and it goes well up above 100. Now one of the great things about these tractors is they're going to have a quick attach system between their loader and their bucket. The John Deere 4 Series will come standard with their own proprietary quick attach system which I think works really well. It's just called the JDQA John Deere Quick Attach. However, one of the 4066R tractors that I had previous to this one did actually have an OEM right from John Deere skid steer quick attach on there. I do believe that is still an option if you are going to be ordering a new tractor. On the John Deere 5 Series, you know, now Listen up, because if you have a 5 Series tractor or you're going to get one, the first question out of my mouth that I'm asking a customer anytime they call is what kind of quick attach do they have between their loader and their bucket? There are three different kinds of connections that I often see on the 5 Series. The John Deere quick attach is probably the least used one that I see. The skid steer quick attach is pretty popular. And then also the global quick attach, which has like a long pin that you pull out and lock open on the side. The loaders on both of these tractors are going to be removable. So if you don't want it on, you can take them off. It'll probably be a little bit easier to remove the loader on the 4 Series compared to the 5. But important note, if you do have a John Deere 4M Series, the 4044M, 4052M, 4066M, that loader, which I think is the D170 model, is not gonna be removable. And lastly, you are gonna have the ability, which this tractor right here is equipped with it, to have a self-leveling option, which means that as you are raising the loader, it's gonna to try to keep it in the same position. So if you had a set of pallet forks on that were perfectly level down here, if you're just pulling back in that joystick to race it higher, it's gonna keep that pallet level. Taking a look at the back side of the tractors, the 4 Series is gonna have a Category 1 three-point hitch. It will also be equipped standard with a 540 RPM rear PTO. The three-point hitch will also come with something called telescopic draft links, which is gonna make adjustment a lot easier than some of the smaller tractors that are out there. A drawbar will also be standard. And you can see this particular tractor is equipped with all three of the rear remote options available from John Deere. Now there is a different option of a rear outlet you can get, I suppose, but it's gonna be treated differently. That's gonna be called Power Beyond. That is is going to typically be used for a backhoe, although you may see some log splitters use that as well. So on the John Deere 5 Series, your three-point hitch is going to actually be a Category 1 slash Category 2. Now there are some handy charts online to help you figure out what category of three-point hitch you have if you're not sure, but what's going to be affected is going to be the hole size, the diameter of the hole inside the ball, as well as the spacing of the three-point arms and compatible attachments. Now, similar to that John Deere 4 Series we took a look at, you're also gonna have standard, a draw bar, telescoping rear draft links, and a 540 RPM rear PTO. As far as hydraulics go, you are gonna see there is one additional rear remote on here. Our 5 Series, our 5115M that we had for a while, I do believe that had three rear remotes on it. I know you can get multiple on the 5 Series. Now I'll be frank, I don't have as much experience with the John Deere 5 Series, so for those of you owners out there with the 5 Series, let us know what you have, leave a comment down below. So we touched on the rear PTOs that are standard on both of these tractors, but this unit does have a mid PTO option. However, John Deere has phased that out quite a few years ago. 
2012 when this model was uh, being manufactured is about the last year that that was available. So you can no longer get a belly mower on this tractor. The 5 Series has never had that capability. All right, so the open station tractors are a little bit different, but these cabs are both very nice. There is a big difference. I'm six foot three, about 200 pounds ish, sitting inside a John Deere 4 Series. I'm pretty comfortable. If I was much bigger than I am right now, I can see where this could start to have a cramped feeling, but I really appreciate this layout. I think everything is very accessible, easy to reach. I have plenty of overhead clearance. However, if I go over to that 5 Series, there is a lot of room in there, and you will see some of the 5 Series models that actually have a buddy seat, because that's how much ample and extra room there is compared to a 4 Series. So this cab is essentially the same thing that's been on the 4 Series from 2005 up until current production. And so there have been a few changes here and there. We did a comparison between this actual tractor and a 4066. So this is a little dated. You know, they have updated styling and whatnot. It's being a 2012, that's to be expected, but really not much. And they didn't need to change a whole lot. I mean, you have to stay within certain parameters. There's not a whole lot of improvements that I can really even think of to make. One thing that is worth noting is that when you're inside a cab, it is pretty quiet. However, I can carry on a conversation on my cell phone if I'm in a gear drive tractor in one of those cabs, but in a hydro machine, you're just gonna have a little bit more noise. And so you wanna be aware of that. Don't think it's going to be like <laughs> perfectly soundproof or anything. There's going to be some of that background noise. So here's a look sitting inside the 5 Series cab. Again, headspace is about the same, but there's just a lot more room <laughs> all up in here. And, and this is generally where some of those models will have that buddy seat that goes. Just a tiny little flip down seat. But there's just, there's more leg room. You know, there's more reaching. I'm stretching my arms out the whole way. More room kind of back around behind you too. So it's nice to have that space. But really, for the most part, a lot of it's not being used anyway. So some random thoughts that kind of didn't fit into any other categories. John Deere actually manufactures the engine for both of these tractors that you see behind me. However, currently Yanmar is going to be the engine that's used in the John Deere 4 Series. Great engine manufacturer. They've been around for decades and decades, not just partnering with John Deere, but under their own lineup and a lot of other manufacturers. So they are very well known, very reliable and very robust. An important consideration could be maneuverability for you. The John Deere 4 Series is going to be a little bit more nimble, you know, especially coupled with a hydrostatic transmission can make like even kind of like a three point turn if you're in really tight quarters a lot easier. If you're going to be in maybe wood lots or a heavily treed area where you have to kind of navigate around, that's going to be a lot easier to do compared to a John Deere 5 Series. Typically on the John Deere 4 Series, I am going to recommend a 6 or a 7 foot attachment. There could be occasions, and I could use an 8 foot rake on there probably and be just fine. I could probably use a 9 foot rake on there and be just fine. You know, certain attachments that aren't ground engaging, like a landscape rake. It's just kind of riding along there. It's not putting a lot of strain on the tractor. You can get away with something larger. That can get to be really inconvenient at a certain point. But the important thing to remember is going to be matching up with the width of your tractor. So if you have... We have a seven foot wide tractor on this four series. If I put a six foot tiller on there, I'm gonna find that to be really annoying because I'm not gonna cover the tracks. So personally, I like to be about the width of the tractor or maybe slightly larger. As far as the John Deere 5 Series goes, I'm going to be about in the same ballpark in that six, seven foot attachment size. Again, with some exceptions, it's just a rule of thumb to get you in the ballpark for the most part. It will depend on the spacing of your wheels, how you have that set up. And also, horsepower is going to come into play. If you have a 45 horsepower version versus a 95 horsepower version, that's a big difference there. 50 horsepower is going to make a big determination on the size of attachment. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. Again, this is not all encompassing. There's going to be other things that come up if i forgot something leave a comment down below if you've gone through this same decision making process and there was something that was really high on your priority list or maybe there was a feature that was lacking on one of these that could be very important and helpful for somebody else when they're going through that same process and in reality this doesn't apply just to john deere Kubota's is going to have the same kind of situation mahindra coyote and the list goes on so again we're talking about essentially the same horsepower on both of these tractors same amount of money, but there's a whole lot of differences. And so while I can't make that decision for you, I just want to help you be more informed. If you did enjoy today's video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to see more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, for the front end loaders or those three point hitches, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for taking the time to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.